Hey everybody, I'm here with my friend Pierre. Now, I'm doing a perfect pitch video here, actually. So let's show them that you have perfect pitch. I'm playing this chord right now. Now, normally in these things, I would just have you say, what is this note? B okay, flat. now, <laughs> so he, this is easy for him. G, D, C sharp, A flat, F, F sharp. Flat. So occasionally the octave, right, is uh, yes. not exactly get the octave correct. If I took a second to breathe, but I would probably would get it. About it. But it's like yeah. a game. I'm trying to get it. See, if I do a two note chord, he'll get it. It's no problem. If I do a th or two notes, if I do three notes, so I have to start getting into a little bit more complex chords for him to even, even to be challenging. So let's say we do something. Let's just uh, do something simple. F, B flat, D, E flat. Let's say. Something like that. Okay, one more time, listen. That's pretty. It's pretty close. Okay. Da, 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 da. Ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now you see the difference between Pierre and me is I played that first note and I used relative pitch to sing D, F, B flat, C, E flat to sing those notes. But Pierre can hear, can explain what you hear when you hear these notes. What does it sound like when you hear that? What is it? What it? How do you know those notes? Now you mm. recognize that combination of notes, right? It's, it goes, it's like a fork in the road. It goes okay. one of two ways. Uh, sometimes I know the tonality, like I know, oh, that's a C minor nine-ish kind of thing. So the jazz brain kicks in, right. trained in understanding harmony and chord symbols, which are just an abbreviation of notes. Yep. And I can use that to kind of reverse engineer with the perfect pitch yeah, in, and find in, the notes. In, but it's instant. It's, yeah, it's pretty fast if I'm puzzled like I just was, where I know it's like, oh, an F sus4 Keith Jarrett kind of thing with a sixth. Then there's a little <laughs> bit of panic, and I'm looking <laughs> to hear certain notes. Like, oh, there's definitely a D, definitely B flat, definitely E flat. Quick, 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 and I can get like 95%. Okay, so I um, yeah. if I play this chord that I just played right here. Okay, I'm going to go to another chord right after it, okay? Two. Yes. Yeah. When you hear that, are you just hearing all those notes again, or, or do you recognize the movement of everything? You just hear them all together, correct? No, I hear them together, and I know that chord because I've played it. I guess playing jazz, and it's a, it's a piece of vocabulary in the dictionary that, right. of, you know, that I've studied. It's like when kids learn to read green eggs and ham, right? They're going like, guh, r, gr, oh, green, right? But as adults, we just see, oh, green eggs and ham, the whole thing. So if totality. I played a voicing like this, another voicing that would be common that he would know. Now, he would know that because that is common jazz vocabulary of a sharp nine, sharp five chord. That's a common spacing of the chord, right? Yep. You'd say that? It's vocabulary. That's sure. vocabulary. Okay, if I, oh, if I just switch it like this, okay? So this may be with a jazz player. Okay, so the E and E flat traded places. Yes. Yeah. It's it's confusing. You're hearing all the same notes though, right? Yeah, it's less conventional. I know something's wrong with that C7 sharp nine. Yes. That's what I'm thinking. So but I'm, I'm thinking about like how do I voice the thing? So sometimes putting the notes out of order from a standard, a st what we call a stock voicing can be a little bit confusing. Although it's, if I were to ask you to name the notes, you'd name all the same notes, right? I just inverted yeah. this to that. Yep. Let's actually talk about some difficult things, okay? So if we get into things that maybe some people may think are difficult, so let's say I did this voicing. Yes. Okay, I missed the C. I had this. So. And, okay, and 
And what would you call that chord there? Okay, uh, F major on the bottom, E on top. So E over F major. Yes, E Poly over chord. F major, polychord, right. If I did a, a voicing like this, if I just altered it a little bit, pardon the pun, and I played it like this. The, that's happening yes, up there. Yes, yes, but listen again. Condensed, yeah. Right? Condensed. Same chord, a little bit, but I made an add E add nine over F, F over F major. Yeah, the F sharp. But yes. that stuck out. It the F stuck sharp out, stuck out. I right? knew something was wrong with it, right? Something was <laughs> wrong with that. Right. But that's a subtle variation of the other chord voicing that we had. If I go to, to some poly chords though, these are this would be play it again. Augmented over C sharp augmented? Yes. D flat augmented. C augmented over D flat augmented. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so in my first video with Dylan, this is the that was one of the chord voices. That's the first polychord that I played for him was that. The second one was this. That? Yes. That's okay. It. Okay, so A major in first inversion on the bottom. Yep. And then A flat in first inversion. First huh. inversion, yes. That's now that's cool. really, to go from this to this. Um, hmm. I love that. Right? And then I actually played him this chord after it. Play it again. Yes. I actually can't believe I'm getting these. Uh, yes. Okay, so A minor on top and first a inversion. A minor. And D flat major over, root position. Over D flat major, right? Oh, yeah. But those chords are so similar. The little changes in, in voicings where one note is different, but they're mm. spaced differently. Really difficult to hear. I'm going to play a chord, then I'm going to add a note to it. On the bottom, F diminished. Okay, yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. It took a minute. If you hear something in your head, or if you're just walking down the street, hmm. can you remember it till you get home? Yeah, usually, but it's always flat in my head. Okay. You know, like I want E to be, mm, but I know it's really, mm. right? It's quite a yeah. bit higher. Like when I tune a guitar, I want to make the whole thing flat and mentally pitches are like that. They're all low. All right, Pierre, tell them about your channel. So uh, I started a YouTube channel about seven or eight months ago, and I'm trying to make the best piano tutorials on YouTube. And I'm basically just trying to take my, I don't know, 15,000 lessons or something of experience since I was 15 and trying to make great piano tutorials to teach people songs that I think are cool, that are useful, some music theory, some nerdy stuff, and uh, and all that. So I'll put a link in the description for Pierre's channel. Follow him. Hit the subscribe on this channel. Thanks so much for watching. Let us know if you have any questions. See you later.